Courtney. And everyone, even if you don't chat, that's okay. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Elliot. Hi, Dakota. Hi, Abby. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Hi, Katie. Hi, Stevie. Hi, Valencia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, let me know if you guys have any specific questions about the talk. Um, yeah, I'll just take them as I see them. <laughs> you got the um, chronological storytelling view of the of the build during the talk. So here, I'm just going to clarify any questions you guys have. So what do I use the shop vac for? It is a shop wet vac, so it can handle liquids. And I use that to suck out the water from the two and a half gallon pools that I have because, um, because they're actual tiny aquariums. I don't have them doubled up like you often do with smaller pools. Um, so I can't like remove them as easily without disturbing the soil. So I discovered from fish keepers that you can use a wet vac to suck up the liquid, liquid, the water in the tank and it helps a lot. So makes it a lot easier. So that's, that's what the wet vac's for. <clears throat> yeah, all my tools and supplies, Julie, Julie asks what type of filters I use in the water pools. Um, all of my supplies that I've used on this build um, are linked in that supply list. I'll put the link here in the chat. Um, so I'm not really going to answer specifics because you can actually go and look at those. Um, exactly. There's the supply list. Um, yeah, let me see here. <laughs> Savannah, I was um, as admiring your 3D prints. Uh, she says she's finishing it. No worries. Dakota says that even in her one gallon pool, she uses an aquarium siphon. Yeah, I just, I just got a shop vac instead because I can use it around the house as well. Um, Abby, I do asks if I have or want live plants in the pools. I don't have any live plants in my hermit crab tanks. I tried live plants once many, many years ago and it freaked out my hermit crabs so much. Like I didn't see them for a month. So I just don't do that now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 I admire those who put live plants in their tanks. I don't want to do that because I don't have that much money to burn. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've just heard stories where the crabs eat the plants and then buy bye money. So yeah, I don't have any or want any live plants in my tanks. They're just, what's in my pools is just aquarium decor. Abby says she uses a turkey baster to suck out the water. Yeah, that would work too, but that would be a lot of water transfer for a two and a half gallon tank. So shot back, takes three seconds, literally to empty the whole thing. So that's what I do. Any other questions? Hey, that's a good idea, Kimberly. Kimberly says, not, I never thought of using Velcro between the tanks. Yep, we, we do that. That's worked well for years. Um, I did that even on my very first tank. She says, we used foam tape like you use around the doors. It worked really well to seal off the spaces for humidity. That's a good idea. I did duct tape like everything that could be duct taped around the tank to help seal in the humidity because I was having that issue or had that issue. Okay. 
Sharon says, I'm a new hermit crab owner as of one week ago. Congratulations! And wants to know, how often do you change out the water in the pools? So because my pools have filters on them, I change out the water um, monthly, just like I would if it had fish in it. Um, but if you have a smaller dish of water that's not filtered, you have to change out your water a lot more frequently. I don't remember the actual recommendations. I, I feel like it's every couple days. Um, yeah, just to keep that fresh. Kathy wants to know what is foam tape? I don't know, Kathy. <laughs> Maybe if someone else can answer. Weather stripping. Kimberly says weather stripping. Okay, I am not aware of that product, but that's okay. Anna says I've been having, we've been having tremors lately, and I just put up a top. Or any thoughts on extra stability furniture anchors? Um, I don't live in an area that's subject to earth movement like that. Um, so for me, the heavy duty Velcro really is super sturdy. Um, I can't really offer any feedback about the furniture anchors or anything. Maybe someone who has faced like earthquakes and things like that has ideas or lives in an area that's more prone to those natural weather phenomenons. Okay, I got a, the chat got a little bit away from me here. Let's see. Sorry, I'm reading and I know that's not very entertaining to watch someone read, but I'm reading all the comments. What type of hermit crabs do I have? They're all purple pinchers. They're all rescues from um, Craigslist and things like that. So um, purple pinchers, definitely. I haven't ever come across any exotics and I'm not sure if I would want them to be honest. I, I, I like to chill with my purple pin pinchers. They're um, hardy, hardy little crabs. <laughs> they do well with my uh, conditions. Hmm. Do you find it especially hard to clean out the aquarium topper without doors? Lily wants to know. Um, kind of, but I also designed it so that there's nothing up there that needs to get cleaned. So there's this shell shop, but the, the shell, shell shop because it's so high up and it has holes in the basket, it's not getting full of sand like it would on the sand substrate. So um, there's not much there. I designed it in such a way that there's not much there for me to actually clean. Um, so I don't find it especially hard to clean that section because there's not much there to clean. My hermit crabs poop in the shells, Abby says. Yeah, you know, they also clean out their shells before they put them on. So I guess they're fine with that. Um, Michelle asks, how do, did you care for a moss pit in the crab habitat? I can't find a lot of information on it. So a moss pit is when you put moss in a container in your tank. So I had moss in the coconut bird house thing there and in the coconut halves that I have throughout the tank. That's the, that um, clear terrarium type hanging thing is the only thing that has some moss left in it. Um, 
but all the other places, they, my little crabbies took the moss out and dragged it into the pool or it fell into the pool and then it broke my filters. So I was pretty upset. So I do not, um, um, put any more moss in the tank, but there's a lot of information on moss and foraging type enrichment items on Lycos and the HCA and yeah, lots of information there. Allie Rose asks, is it 100% required to seal the spray, spray foam with silicone? Absolutely. So yes, the silicone is crab proof. Um, sorry, let me rephrase that. The silicone is crab safe. The spray foam is not. So you need to seal off the um, spray foam with the silicone to give a, as much of a crab barrier as you can between the foam and your crabs. And the more layers of silicone that you can provide will help prevent damage in the tank that I talked about in my talk um, towards the end of it. Jean wants to know, how did you introduce your crabs to the new tank arrangement? Um, when they came up from their old tank, I picked them up and I put them in the new tank and I shut the door. <laughs> That's that's how I introduce them. I didn't like, I know with some animals you might do a more of a gradual approach, but we just, I don't feel like we know enough about hermit crabs like feelings to do something like that. I just toss them in. I just move them over. Um, maybe that's not what you're asking, but that's how I answered it. I have kind of a lazy approach to crab care. I just move them over. <laughs> Lily asks, have I rescued any crabs that were in proper conditions beforehand? Yes, three of them were, were in proper Lycos recommended, recommended conditions. However, the owner just couldn't care for them anymore. So I took them in. Sarah Schickel has a um, crab care question. Ask that in the Lycos Facebook group. Moderators can help you kind of break that down. That's not what this talk this session is for, um, or um, yeah, this session is for talking about the crab tank build. So we'll stick on topic. <laughs> Allie says she's thinking of getting a little rake for the moss. That's funny. Tiny rake. Um, Kim and Nathan and son, or Kim, and son Nathan wants to know what would be the recommended beyond the basic setup requirements. What's your favorite add-on? I would say that one, besides the basics, having something to climb, and that can be a variety of items such as like chola wood um, or a climbable background, definitely um, would be my number one recommendation my second recommendation, it would be fake plants to just give them more coverage. And, um, sorry, Dakota, yes, I'm, I think I'm good. I don't know what you mean, but yes, I'm good here now. Um, <laughs> uh, and then another add-on, if you have the space, is getting a hermit crab wheel, and that is any kind of animal saucer wheel. Um, like these saucer types that are more like a bowl are nice because they don't have um, the, like the slats where your hermit crabs legs could get stuck and the hermit crabs love exercising. So something to climb, something 
um, fake plants to hide in, and then a wheel. Would say, I'd say are my beyond the bare minimum recommendations. Okay, apparently, okay, I am down. I am down to the current chat. Here we go. I was a little backlogged. Casey Wren wants to know about adding a topper that's larger than your base. Have I ever attempted this? No. Do you have any suggestions for making it possible? Um, you really need the walls of the tank to be supported. So if the topper is larger than your base, I would say you'd have to like build a stand or have a really sturdy shelf to still support the walls of the tank. Um, yeah, because aquariums are just built that way that they need support on all four sides of the tank. So sometimes you'll see like new, new crab keepers or new um, aquarium owners where they'll put like the tank on a stand that's smaller than the tank and it will bow and break. So definitely you have to have all four sides supported. I will stay a little bit longer, Mary, just until um, the questions are done, um, but then I'll wrap it up. Sarah says she got a wheel, but they never seem to use it. Yeah, I have not. I've only seen my crabs use the wheel like twice in my um, <clears throat> in my experience. However, they uh, I know they're using it because it's absolutely filthy <laughs> every day. Yeah, poop and dirt and all sorts of stuff they will leave on the wheel and they are pretty nocturnal. Like I don't, when I first got hermit crabs, that was um, in 2017. So that was what, five years ago. And I was five years younger and I had more insomnia issues. So I would stay up at night and watch my hermit crabs. But now as I'm older, I go to bed earlier and I just don't watch them at night as much. So I just trust that they use it based on the evidence the next morning. Great. Is there any other questions about the tank build or anything you wanted to see? I do have it right here. Um, if you have any questions. about the build. I have five hermit crabs. Jenna Bean would like to see my pools. All right, I'll try to give you a close up here. Eh, kind of hard, but there's the saltwater pool. It's pretty basic. We just have the filter, uh, an aquarium decor piece, and a bridge from Hermes Homemades. So you have to special order them from Facebook. And then here's the um, freshwater pool. Again, it's pretty basic. I just have the filter, a one piece of aquarium decor that looks like rock, and then uh, an aquarium plant, which um, I debate taking out all the time, and a ramp from Hermes Homemade. The size of the pools, they're two and a half gallon, which is the smallest that you can get in that like traditional aquarium style. And because that does take up substrate space, 
I made the substrate even deeper than the recommended um, depth to give it more, to give our crabs more molting space. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for um, hanging out with me and answering or asking questions and watching my build and being interested in hermit crab um, tank building and giving your crabs more en enrichment and um, a happy a happy home. So thank you so much for your interest and. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to direct message me here on the Hopin platform. But please, please remember that when the conference ends, the direct messages that you sent on Hopin are no longer accessible. So if you need to reach out to me, you can reach out to me. I'm in the Facebook groups, Christine Sandberg. You can also send me a direct, direct message on Instagram. My Instagram handle is Christine's Crab Cure. And um, otherwise, I'll be around. Thank you guys so much. And let's enjoy the rest of CrabCon weekend. Toodaloo.